for flying Ryanair. Welcome to today's video. So I've just updated my Zebo 737 for the first time in about a year. So we're going to take it on a quick test flight, find out what's new, what's improved and give my thoughts on it. So why have I not updated this aircraft for this amount of time? I'm a fan of what the Zebo has brought to X-Plane 43, the amount of features that are constantly being added. However, the word stable version don't really seem to exist when it comes to this plane. So whenever you update your plane, you have no idea whether you're going to get an improved experience or whether everything is going to be completely broken. And yes, I know it's beta software, but would it be so hard to leave the last known stable version up as well as the latest broken one? And that's why I've kept a version that I'm personally happy with for this amount of time. So let's get straight into it. The thing I love about this new version of the Zebo, which is 3.34 RC2, is that it has a turnaround mode. So you've literally just got to start loading the aircraft, start your flight leg, do your PA message, and the rest of the startup is really, really easy. We've also got this nice new airline specific boarding messages and music, which is a nice touch. So we'll set our barometer and our minimums here for the airport we're going to, which is Cardiff in Wales. This isn't an in-depth professional tutorial to the new Zebo, but it should show you how to get it in the air very quickly and very easy in this turnaround mode. So we're setting the ILS frequency for Cardiff Airport on Nav1 and Nav2 radios here. We'll also set the course of the ILS for Cardiff for pilot and co-pilot sides of the plane. And we'll set the squawk code and TARE here. Okay, this is our usual FMC setup. You've seen it a thousand times before. If you want to know how to do it, it is available on my other videos. Okay, let's set up the autopilot. First, we set our altitude to our cruising altitude, which today is 24,000 feet. Let's get that initial speed in. We'll set it to V2, which is 145 knots today. Arm back flight director on both sides. Go L nav, V nav, and arm the auto throttle. This is where the advantage of the new turnaround mode comes in really, really handy. What we have to do is start the APU, turn on the APU gen and the APU bleeds. We'll turn the packs off for engine start and we'll get that probe heat going on as well. With the APU running, we'll just disconnect the GPU and we'll get pushback. Starting pushback and you may start engines. Okay, as we push back, we'll get these lights on and we'll get engine 2 over to ground and start it up. Turning the lights on now also triggers this nice pre-flight announcement. And introduce fuel air for engine number 2. And with number 2 started, flick over engine number 1 to ground. Same did as before. As soon as the N2 hits about 11, introduce the fuel for engine number one. Also check out this nice new cabin, which we'll see in a little bit more detail later on. Operation complete, set parking brake. As the truck disconnects, we can switch on engine gen, we can switch on engine bleeds, get that APU bleeds off. And packs back to auto. APU can go off completely now, we don't need that centre fuel tank, there's nothing in it. Set that cabin out so we don't suffocate once we get in the air, and that also now triggers a new announcement in the Zebo, which is kind of cool. Set the auto brake to RTO there, 
parking brake off and we can begin our taxi as the safety announcement continues. Or in the overhead locker for taxi, takeoff and landing. We would like to remind you that smoking is not permitted. Thank you for your attention. Please sit back, relax and enjoy your flight. On runway two, two. So now we're on the runway, we can reflect on just how much quicker and simpler that startup process was. Like, I didn't even need a checklist. It almost makes it as easy as the Airbus to fly. Just setting the takeoff trim here, which I should have done earlier, possibly, but hey, it's all done. We're all good. Okay, let's hit the magic button, throttles up to Toga, and we're on our way. Alright, so like I said guys, this isn't like a full flight video, I'm just going to highlight the new bits in this update that I've noticed, so we'll cut to various stages of the flight once we switch this autopilot on at 400 feet, and we're good to go. Alright, so the first thing I've noticed is that the LNAV and VNAV initially seems really good. Before, there was the odd problem where it would go off track or it wouldn't climb properly, but touch wood, this one seems completely flawless. So it's time to look at this beautiful new cabin. Even the entry area of the aircraft is stacked with virtual cans of coke, and galley equipment and the attention to detail is amazing it's almost like what you get on a flight factor plane we've also got the Boeing Sky interior I believe a nice two-class layout with some first-class seats there and as the plane banks over you can see that the interior detail of this plane is far far higher than it ever was in the old version which used I believe it was a cabin from the default X-Plane MD-80 or something like that and even at the back of the plane if we look the galley area is fully modelled so in terms of visuals this plane is a huge improvement. We've skipped ahead to top of descent here I've actually let the plane miss top of descent so it's in VNAV out mode it wants to descend but it can't so the reason for this is I wanted to test the altitude intervention switch. In previous versions, if you missed your TOD and then you entered the altitude and pressed the intervention switch, the plane would pretty much ignore the VNAV. It would go into some crazy um, open descent. But here we can see we've pressed that switch. We're now in a VNAV path mode as we should be. And it is working to catch our correct descent path, which again is huge huge improvement another cool feature is this new heads-up display it's not correctly collimated or anything like that currently it's just a gauge overlaid on a flat panel but I believe they are working on that functionality as it stands it's a little bit more of a hindrance than a help because the horizon doesn't line up with the actual horizon but I just thought I'd flip it down to show you guys that new feature. So this is the big one, this is can this plane follow an ILS, a glide slope in this current version and will it auto land? So we've captured the localizer just fine, gears coming down, landing config's good, no issues with the decel whatsoever and here comes the glide slope so with the Zebo, I've had versions that have auto landed at about four or five hundred feet per minute which for an auto land is acceptable I've had some that just refuse to follow an ILS or auto land at all and I've I think I've had a version or two that have managed it at a couple of hundred feet per minute but I believe those versions sort of had other issues outside of the glide slope. So I've never really had, a, I guess, a perfect version of the Zebo, 
where it's done all phases of flight with LNAV, VNAV, and the ILS and the Autoland stuff absolutely flawlessly. Touch wood, this one's looking fairly positive. So we'll see how we do here. We seem to be on the glide slope absolutely perfectly. There's no dramatic movements in pitch or trim. We seem to be following it down absolutely spot on. Although that is quite a sudden pitch down there. We are looking, we're looking a little bit low here and then you can see it's it's heading into airspeed low as it tries to pitch back up and some reason are we pitching back down again? This, yeah, we might make the runway, but it's looking that it's heading for it's heading for the trees. I, I I don't really understand what it's what it's doing. But oh, <laughs> so the auto land and the ILS functionality isn't quite perfect in this version of the plane. Oh my god, is it actually playing? It's actually playing the Ryanair landing music. Thank you for flying Ryanair. Last year, over 90% of our flights arrived on time. We have a 10% that we didn't. And we look forward to welcoming you on board again soon. As we sit Ryanair. burning on the ground. Low Amazing. That's spectacular. <laughs> so, on a serious note, guys, this is why this video is called Why Laminar Should Hire a Zero. Imagine if you take the amazing features of the aircraft as it currently is, but introduce proper robust testing procedures, some prioritization of bugs versus new functionality. If you introduce a professional process to the development of this software, it would just be a spectacular, flawless product that I would badly pay for. What do you think guys? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching and remember until next time you can always go around. Take care.